Ah, uh, good evening, traveler. And welcome to the penumbra. Take your seat, please. Take your seat. The junction lies ahead, so if you'll allow me just a moment. We are now approaching Fort Terminus. Our next stop, the battle at World's End. Sir Caroline, the nightmares have begun. (sighs) Sir Caroline, if you are alive, I command you to respond. Sir Angelo, Sir Damien, if any of you are alive to receive this message, I command you to respond and report to your citadel immediately. The creature in the shadows grows stronger by the day. The halls are lit by torches, but in their flickering the monsters only reproduce, change shape, fit into the spaces between the firelight and skitter into the walls, and from there to who knows where, into others' rooms to watch them, to do what deeds they do in the dark, dark... I've had nightmares. Which I only mention because this seems to be the sole symptom that separates me from my medic, and so I thought it might be the monster's work, which you, Investigator General, ought to know about. There are strange dreams. When I sleep, my body is... changed. I feel that I am coiled inside something. An egg, perhaps. And though I'm completely safe within... I can feel all that happens without. The cold, rushing water somewhere close to me, and further still, I can feel presences nearby that wish me harm. They are small, but they frighten me. And so I track each one. While I bubble in my cocoon, I count them with the damp strands of my antennae again and again. Seven. Seven separate specks that can do no harm to me alone, but together they terrify me. And I can only watch as they drift closer and closer together. Or I think I can only watch. But through the memory of instinct, I remember that there's more. And so I focus on the specks and cut their minds open as easily as peaches with my claw. And I see what lies inside. This one's scared he's lost his brother. This one fears she'll be found out. They're all afraid already. And if only I can use that to keep them separate. Separate until I solidify and burst from my cocoon. Then nothing will threaten me and I will never have to fear anything ever again. The first one is so easy. He's so afraid already that I can't be certain I've done anything to him at all. So I loose a jet of fear into his surroundings and curdle the world around him and him and her with such force it bends steel, and then the deed is done. He's gone soon after. Then I sniff at the meat of another's thoughts. He fears for a place close to here, a wet and dark place where a massive plant feels emotion with such force that it threatens to swallow my mind whole. Then I know exactly how to make that speck separate itself. I fill the creatures in that swamp with fear. I make every one of them just as frightened of that huge plant as I am, just as frightened as I always am, and it nearly kills me to push so hard at things so far away, but it works. They attack the plant. The fear within the reptile's mind grows, and then... Suddenly, he is gone. In an instant... And I am that much closer to surviving until my second birth. The grub is attuned to your... Your queen, Amaryllis. The grub has a mental link with your queen, and I can't be certain what it's capable of. Really, keep. You couldn't hold the portal open for another five seconds. And... You've brought me nowhere near you. Keep! I'm too weak to play this game. Another portal. Now! Keep! This keep you're talking to is gonna have to keep, Lizard. Because you're not going anywhere. Nice. That was so cool! Oh, excellent. Another blade in my throat. And another knight. I'm not a knight yet, but with your head, I'm feeling like odds are pretty good. That's going to change. 
And here I was thinking I wasn't going to get my big monster kill after all. And look who it is! Mr. Bug Dragon himself, falling right into my saddle. It is my saddle! I bought it! And with this, I've been debased completely. At least I've nowhere further to fall. I don't wear it because it's not my size. Now, can you just shut up so I can get one cool moment killing this big monster? Please? Uh, curses! My evil plot has been foiled. Oh, the shame. The regret. If only I were given a second chance at life, I am certain that I would mend my ways and be a force for good. Yeah, listen, none of this is going to work on me, Scales. For one thing, there are manipulative monsters everywhere, so I can't buy the good guy act. That'd be dumb. And for another, I just... Like, really need a cool monster head so I can ace this job interview I've got coming up. So if we could just get to the chopping, it'd mean a lot. Thanks. All right, here we go. Wait, stop. Stop. Don't kill me or, or you'll regret it. Oh, and why is that, Dragon Bug? Because, well, of course. Maybe you've got some information you'd like to tell me? Information? An even bigger monster. I know a place in this swamp where an even bigger monster rests. And if you let me live, you'll have its head. An even bigger monster? Seriously? Okay, so that was super not where I thought this was going, but no way I'm saying no to that. Just stand still so I can tie you up with this rope, Blizzard, because you're going to lead the way to my biggest monster yet. Ha! <sighs> <sighs> Walking towards you for an hour. If you can hear me, please respond by dropping a tree on this night. What was that, Scales? Oh, brave knight, I was only... Don't care. If you're not saying here's that big monster I promised, you should be focusing on finding it. Of course, brave knight. <sighs> I'm gonna take care of this knight, Keith, and this is how we're gonna do it. That's better. And with my pet monster leading the way, I can sit back, relax, and document every moment of my victory. Ah, there! My recording device! Brave Knight, did you say something? Nope, just keep walking. <clears throat> this is Sir Mark's Journey into Knighthood, Act 5, titled Sir Mark's Big Sneaky Trick Against the Dumb Lizard That Kidnapped Rilla. My plan worked exactly how I thought it would. I found the four-armed lizard out here in the Swamp of Titan's Blooms, and at first I thought, well, well, turns out staying back did have its benefits. Time to take this monster's head. But then I thought, wait! If I kill him, I'll never know where Rilla is. And then I thought of... No, I invented a technique that's sure to get me a knighthood. Pre-interrogation. Interrogation. Ha! Oh, most virtuous knight. Up ahead. Quiet! I'm busy! See, what I did is this. I made the monster think I was going to kill him. And right before I really did it, I stopped. And all cool, I asked. Is there anything you want to tell me? Knight! And the lizard was all. Yeah, please don't hurt me. I'll do anything you say. So then I got him to tell me where an even bigger monster was. Oh, so... Imbecile, tin-coated buffoon. Stop talking into your hand and look here. I wasn't talking into my hand. I was... Never mind. I don't have to tell you. What? What is it? What's so important that you had to... Oh, wow, that's a lot of birds. And venomous snakes and poisonous frogs. How about the monkeys? Are they poisonous? No. That's good anyway. Their fangs are, however. Cool, cool. And they're all just headed our way, huh? Indeed. And in the distance, they're attacking my keep. I'd worry more about us, Scales, because those animals look like they mean business. Do, do you see that giant plant in the distance, Knight? It's safe. You can hide there if you clear a path. How am I supposed to know if you're telling the truth? And the giant monster I told you about lives in there, too. All right, that's it. Hold on, lizard, because we're heading for that plant full gallop. Ride down, Pierre. Wow. 
Looks like it is safe in here. Thanks, Scales. <laughs> I guess people can really surprise you, you know? Or monsters. And, like, I, I guess I never really give you a chance to prove yourself. That wasn't fair. And so, in the end, I, I guess the real lesson is to... Keep just... strangle him with vines. What the... Oh! Whoa! Damn it! I knew I couldn't trust you! And after I was about to forgive you, for shame, lizard. For shame. Oh, stop whining. You were reaching for your sword. You were still going to behead me. I was thinking about it, yeah, but that's not the same as doing it. So... Enough of this. Keep. Kill this knight. That means now, Keep. Yes, we are going to kill him. Nonsense. A point so ridiculous that I can't even explain why it's incorrect. Just ram another log through his chest or something. Is this guy talking to his house? It doesn't even talk back. <laughs> You're right, down here. He's gotta be nuts. I don't care. Just because we like one human doesn't mean we have to like all of them. This one is nothing like Amaryllis. And right now he is in our way. Kill him. Amaryllis? Rilla? Damn it, I knew you were the monster who kidnapped Rilla. Where is she? Oh, I set her free ages ago. W what? Really? And you said you like her? Ridiculous! Who said that? I never said that. And if you tell another soul... Then hey, Scales, this is awesome! Because I like Rilla too. I'm basically her brother. So this is pretty wild for me, but like, that means you can let me go now so I can go help her. A good trick, Knight, but it won't work. It's not a trick. I really do know Rilla. Seriously, how else would I know her nickname, huh? Or that she's a doctor, and a really good one. Or that she's allergic to raspberries, but she really likes them, so sometimes she eats them anyway and her mouth gets all itchy. Those are not good points. Be quiet. She is the only exiled herbalist in your citadel. She must be somewhat well-known. Everything you've told me is common knowledge. Mm, even the raspberries. You could have invented those. We've no way of checking. But if you think I'll let some human's half-constructed lies trick me into endangering my home... <laughs> really? Because it sounds to me like by not believing me, you're putting it in a lot more danger than I am. <sighs> Fine. Then... Prove it to me. Prove I know Rilla? How? I do not care. I'll be clear, human. At stake here is my home, my life, and the lives of every creature in my care. So your proof had better be good, and it had better come now, and if it fails on either count, my keep will kill you. Ah! It's consented to your murder. Now, proof. Um, I, uh... uh <clears throat> Recorder! Rilla and I built a recording device together, and it's in my pack. Is it now? This does not look as impressive as Amaryllis's device. Well, it's the same thing, all right? So just let me go, and I... No, wait! Don't turn it on! Shh. This is Sir Mark's Journey into Nighthood, Act 5, titled Sir Mark's Big Sneaky Trick Against the Dumb Lizard That Kidnapped Rilla. My plan worked exactly how I thought it Knighthood acceptance speech take two. My dearest queen, the thanks I give for this position run deeper than the ocean. Hotter than... Uh, never mind, start out. My dearest... Yeah, that wasn't my best work. Acceptance speech take 439. Listen, queenie, it's about damn time you smartened up. Ooh, must have been a bad day. Dear diary. Switch it, switch it, switch it! Honestly, I'd rather die than let you hear that one. Research log entry. What the hell? This isn't my recorder. I'm Aurelis. There she is. <laughs> Mark! Mark! Where did you put my recorder? Rilla, come on. How come I have to get the junky recorder, huh? Because you broke yours. Because you never take care of your things. You. Mark, you can't stay in this swamp. What are you thinking? Honeysuckle. Sorry, Damien. Busted a horseshoe. I don't make the rules. Then fix it. You are one of our finest fighters, Mark, and we'll need you for the tasks ahead. I've heard enough. Keep. Let him go. <laughs> That's more like it. Now you, Mark. Sir Damien said you're a talented fighter, is that true? Of course it's true. Then follow me. You're going to help me defend this keep. 
Uh, wait. I don't remember agreeing to that. Listen, Scales, I really just want to find Rilla and get back to questing. That's not possible. Amaryllis is currently at the edge of the world, about to do battle with the most dangerous monster the Northern Wilds has seen in centuries. Rilla's gonna fight the big monster? Really? She isn't alone. There are several knights with her. Rilla and all my friends get a tag team match against a big apocalypse monster, and I'm stuck here killing a bunch of storks? Those were herons. I'm stuck here killing a bunch of herons? And we can't kill them. I suspect the monster they plan to fight has manipulated the creature's fear to make them attack the keep. They are innocent. Only the monster Rilla will face is guilty. Can't kill them? Manipulates fear? Uh, that's it? I gotta go get a piece of that monster? Sorry, Scales, but you're on your own. What? Yeah, but playing frog catcher sounds fun, but I've got real hero work to do. Don Pierre, let's go. You'll never make it. I have to try. We're surrounded by a swamp's worth of flora and fauna that want to kill you. Oh, well, what am I supposed to do, huh? My friends are in danger. I should be with them. Even on horseback, the beast is days away. This is pointless. Well, then, like, I feel like I should at least, you know, be closer to the action. Like, out in the swamp, in no danger at all. Doing nothing of value to anyone? Ugh, come on, this isn't fair. I'm supposed to be the big hero. The Salamander Knight. I already missed out on at least one wacky adventure so I could soup up my big finish since I already blew the whole flame sword thing on the last mission. And now you're telling me that instead of taking out the scariest monster ever, I gotta hang around here swatting flies? If it's any consolation, that monster is made largely of fly parts. It isn't! That's even cooler! Ah! So close. Damn it. Tal and I were this close to being real knights, and I missed it again. I've been working my whole life for this, and we were almost there, and... Perhaps you should go, then. I should what? For all our shouting about individualism and freedom, I am ultimately in this situation because the Monster Collective forced me to be. I won't do the same. Act as you need. You want me to go? And just leave you behind here? That is what I said, yes. No, ew, what? Maybe, well, maybe a monster would do it, but (laughs) that means I won't, obviously. So, (laughs) let's do it. (laughs) That's what I say. Do what? Help you. A monster. Which is weird, but here I am, I guess. Are they attacking now? They gotta be attacking now, right? Just tell me what tools you're working with here, and we'll take them all out together. I have at my disposal a living castle full of biological weaponry and experimental tricks and traps. And you? I've got pockets full of all that stuff you just said, if you take out the biological part. Excellent. Keep. Grow a portal to your balcony at once. (sighs) Might not be the big finish I wanted, but this is still pretty sweet. Two salamanders fighting side by side against the monster's horde. Defending a fort is practically at the end of the world. Even if we die, this will be awesome. You are wrong on two counts, Knight. First, I am not a salamander. Oh, sorry. Uh, And you are? A magical construct that defies petty biological labels. Huh, okay. That does take a while to say, though. Then call me Lord Aram. Listen when I tell you your second error. We are not going to die here. I've made a promise that I don't plan to break, and I will not miss my duel a second time. Uh, what? The portal's open. Keep. Prepare for battle. That I understand. If you've enjoyed this tale, please consider donating to the Penumbra on Patreon. Our artists work tirelessly to bring you these stories, and if you have the means, we hope you will support our efforts. Every dollar helps. You can find that page at patreon.com slash the Penumbra podcast. If you support us on Patreon at the $10 level or higher, you will receive access to commentary tracks like this one, from actors Leslie Drescher and Melissa Enyalot and co-creator Kevin Vibert. Strong personalities and... They have very strong opinions and don't want to... They're, they're used to getting their way. 
and yeah. they are now up against each other and neither of them is willing to back down. I think also like you know people in your life who probably drive you crazy who like they're probably right most of the time mm-hmm. and Caroline and Rilla are probably used to being right most of the time mm-hmm. and when yep. they disagree someone's got to be wrong. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it's not Rilla. <laughs> You can also support The Penumbra by liking us on Facebook, following us on Twitter at The Penumbra Pod, following us on Tumblr at The Penumbra Podcast, telling your friends about us, telling your friends to tell their friends about us, and especially by rating and reviewing our podcast on iTunes. Every rating, comment, and kind word spreads our stories further and inspires us to keep creating more and better tales to come. We would like to give special thanks to all who support us on Patreon, but especially to Minchowski, Amy Tomlinson, Ezra Acton, Ota Arcana, Rowan Collins, Garrett M, Jay Yanazelli, Karen ZH, Fiona Parker, Reagan, Kim Zygan, and Jamie Gunter for their incredibly generous contributions per episode. Thank you. Did you know that the Penumbra has merchandise for sale? It's true. The Penumbra has partnered with DFTBA to bring you the posters, shirts, and pins your heart desires. Just go to dftba.com and search for the Penumbra podcast. This tale, The Battle at World's End, was told by the following people. Cat Buckingham as Queen Mira, Noah Symes as Lord Aram, Stefano Purdy as Sir Mark, Kate Jones and Cat Buckingham as The Keep, Melissa Enilat as Rilla, and Matthew Zanzinger as Sir Damien. The Penumbra is created and produced by Sophie Kaner and Kevin Vibert. If you wish to know more about our ever-expanding, infinitely creative team of artists, musicians, editors, designers, and managers, you can read about them in the show notes of this episode. I'm afraid this is the end of the line for today, dear traveler. We hope you will ride with the Penumbra again soon.